Well, doctors at Vets Donald Gordon Medical Center have transplanted a liver from an HIV-positive mother to her HIV-negative child. The operation is believed to be the first of its kind in the world. A severe shortage of organs forced doctors to accept the mother's donation. A year on, doctors have not detected any active HIV infection in the child's bloodstream. Well, joining us to discuss this incredible story is Professor Jean Botta, who performed the transplant. Uh, good evening, Prof. Thanks very much for coming through, and I think we I'll say congratulations. Thanks, for you. It's a pleasure being here. Now, to just take us back a step or two, if uh, you will. Now, was getting the mother's liver the child's only chance of survival? It was, we perceived to be the child's last chance. We had felt like we had exhausted all other opportunities uh, to obtain organs and organ for this child. Uh, two other potential living donors had been evaluated, found not to be suitable, and the child had been on our waiting list for 180 days uh, before we turned to, to the mother to use her organ, uh, liver from her. Uh, so we felt like there was a window of opportunity that was rapidly closing for this child, that if we did not get the child transplanted, she, the child would be dying from the liver disease. I mean, for those of us who, of course, are unfamiliar with uh, medicine, how was it even uh, theoretically you know, or hypothetically possible that, uh, you know, a, an HIV mother could donate, you know, an organ to uh, an HIV child and, have, and the child has a chance of surviving? Well, transplantation of HIV-positive organs has been controversial. Until work done by our colleagues uh, at UCT, uh, first transplanted uh, HIV-positive kidneys into HIV-positive kidney recipients with really very good results. And this was because they were also uh, had these organ shortages and had limitations of getting their patients onto dialysis. So that groundbreaking research uh, sort of paved the way. We've now taken this a step further and thought we still have organ shortages. And when pushed... Uh, is it possible, the question we asked ourselves, is it possible that we can transplant an organ from an HIV-positive uh, person in a very controlled fashion? And by controlled, I mean they were on antiretroviral therapy. We could determine what their CD4 counts were. We could determine what the viral load was. Uh, and we could, in addition to that, offer the child prophylaxis in an attempt to try and prevent transmission of the virus. So this was a very controlled, calculated uh, situation. And we do feel that is the, taking the next step uh, into uh, looking at alternatives for patients in dire need of, uh, of organs for transplantation. Now, successful as this particular one um, may have been, and the ones you've referred to that uh, the University of Cape Town has done in the past, what, though, is the downside to what you, you have done? Well, the downside is really... In, ethical and a medical uh, problem. Uh, from an ethical point of view, we know in this country, which we have a very high prevalence of HIV, uh, and so there's a stigma attached to the disease, and, the, and that persists. While that stigma is waning, it is still there. And we're now going to transplant an organ into a child and potentially infect the child uh, with HIV uh, in an attempt to save the child's life, of course. But that child is not getting any choice in this matter. And knowing what the stigma attached to the disease is, uh, we're subjecting the child to somewhat of an unknown uh, future with, with regards to that. Our hope is that over time, that stigma will wane and disappear, and it will be like hepatitis B virus or hepatitis C virus, where there's no stigma attached to having had or having the disease or living with it. Do you believe that uh, there, are a lots of, there are lots of people out there uh, who may perhaps have been saved uh, were it not for the stigma attached to? I believe that is correct. Um, in terms of people that could have been saved with organs, uh, we're proud in this country, obviously, of the massive, uh, with the largest antiretroviral therapy program in the world. And so this has created something fairly unique uh, in that we now have adults that are living long and living well with HIV. Uh, and that those parents now, we're showing that they could potentially be 
living donors for their HIV negative children that are also being born and protected from the virus uh, and developing diseases like everyone else develops. Uh, so there potentially are children that could have been saved uh, from living donation with parents who are HIV positive but living very well with the disease. I mean, your success, of course, uh, doesn't resolve our organ shortage um, uh, crisis. How do we deal uh, with that and, and what needs to change? A lot needs to change. I think we don't understand as a public uh, how we can help other people with organ donation. I think we have to obviously be empathetic towards the cultural diversity that exists within our country and we have to start having serious conversations and difficult conversations about organ donation. In Europe we're seeing uh, countries change the laws uh, to something that uh, is known in transplantation as an opt-in system or an opt-out system rather, that while you're alive, by law you have to document somewhere that you're opting out of being an organ donor. Everyone else that doesn't opt out is then presumed to be an organ donor. I think we, we have a very culturally diverse country and we need to be empathetic towards all of that, but we have to start having that dialogue uh, as to how people can help other people after they've died. Well, you were there with the minister. Uh, I mean, <laughs> um, you know, today um, he was talking about this uh, uh, breakthrough. How receptive is he to what you've just raised? The minister is very receptive. I was, I was uh, really encouraged by meeting him and having these discussions with him. Uh, he gave us a wonderful analogy uh, about saving lives and the cost that comes with saving lives. Uh, so I, I respect the fact that I think he is uh, dedicated to having these, these difficult discussions. Of course, being receptive is one thing, but being keen to actually act, uh, I mean, actively uh, do something about it is another. Yeah, seen to be on board is one thing, but driving it is another. I do agree with that. Well, best of luck, and once again, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks uh, very much. Well, Professor Jean Botta, who is the Director of Transplantation at the Transplant Unit at Vets Donald Gordon Medical Center.